In today's video, we're going to learn about economics and why it's important. My name is Rai with Company Comprehension and welcome to today's video. Let's just jump right in. So at its core, economics is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. These can be individual decisions, family, business, or even societal decisions. And if you look around carefully, you will see that scarcity is a fact of life. Scarcity means that human wants for goods and services and resources exceed what is available. Resources like labor, tool, lands, and even raw materials are necessary to produce the goods and services that we want, but they do exist in a limited supply. And of course, the ultimate scarce resource is time. Everyone from rich or poor just has 24 hours in a day to try to acquire the goods that they want. And at any point, there's only a finite amount of resources available. By the end of this video, we should be able to discuss the importance of studying economics, explain the relationship between production and the division of labor, also evaluate the significance of scarcity. If you really don't believe that scarcity is a problem, consider a few of the following. Does everyone need to eat? Does everyone need a decent place to live? And does everyone deserve to have access to health care? Well, in every country around the world, there are people that are hungry, homeless, and in need of health care, and that's just to focus on a few critical goods and services. So why is this the case? It's because of scarcity. Let's delve into the concepts of scarcity a little bit deeper, because it's crucial to understanding economics. The problem of scarcity. Think about all the things that you consume. Food, shelter, clothing, transportation, health care, and entertainment. How do you acquire those things? If you do not produce them yourself, you buy them. And how do you afford those things? You work for your wages. Or if you do not, someone else does on your behalf. Yet, most of us have never had enough to buy all the things that we want. This is because of scarcity. So how do we solve the problem? Well, every society at every level must make a choice about how to use its resources. Families must decide whether they're going to spend their money on a new car or a vacation. Towns have to decide whether to put more budget into the police and fire protection or into their school system. Nations have to decide whether to devote more funds into national defense or to protect the environment. And in most cases, there's just not enough money in the budget to do everything. So then why don't we all just each produce the things that we need to consume? The simple answer is because most of us don't know how, but that's not the main reason. Think back to pioneer days, when individuals knew how to do many more practical tasks than we do today. From building their own homes, to growing their own crops, to hunting for their own food, or even repairing their own equipment. Most of us don't know how to do all of that or any of those things. And it's not because that we can't learn, rather we don't have to. The reason why is because of something called the division and specialization of labor. So what is the division and specialization of labor? The formal study of economics began with Adam Smith, published his famous book, The Wealth of Nations, in 1776. Many authors have written on economics in the centuries before Smith, but he was the first one to address the subject in a comprehensive way. In the first chapter, Smith introduced the division of labor, which means that the way a good or a service is produced is divided into a number of tasks that are performed by different workers, instead all of the tasks being done by the same person. And in modern day, businesses divide tasks as well. Even a relatively simple business like a restaurant divides up their tasks into a few different jobs. They'll have waiters, servers, chefs, management, janitors, accountants, and so forth. And then not to mention that the economical connections a restaurant will have with their food suppliers, furnitures, kitchen equipments, the building where it's located, so much is tied to it. And then when you consider something like a complex business, a large manufacturing factory like a shoe factory, they can have hundreds if not thousands of job classifications. So why is the division of labor so important? Well, firstly, it increases productivity. When a task involved with producing goods or services are divided and then subdivided, workers and businesses can produce a greater quantity of output. Specialization in a particular small job allows workers to focus on a part of the production process where they will have an advantage in. People have different skills, talents, and interests, so they will be better at some jobs than others. The particular advantages may be based on their educational choices, or it may be based on what they've done throughout their entire life. For example, only those with a medical degree can qualify to become doctors. 
If you live in or near a big city, it is easier for you to attract enough customers to operate a successful dry cleaning business or movie theater than if you live in a sparsely populated rural area. Whatever the reason, if people specialize in the production of what they do best, they will be more efficient at it. Secondly, workers who specialize in certain tasks often learn to produce quickly and at a higher quality. This pattern holds true for many workers, including the old assembly line laborers who used to build cars, stylists who do hairs, doctors who perform heart surgery. In fact, specialized workers often know their jobs well enough to suggest innovative ways to improve their efficiency. And thirdly, specialization allow businesses to take advantage of economics of scale, which means that for many goods, as the level of production increases, the average cost of producing each individual unit declines. For example, if a factory only produces 100 cars a year, each of those cars will be quite expensive to make on average. However, if a factory produces 50,000 cars a year, then it can set up an assembly line with huge machines and workers performing specialized tasks and the average cost of production per car will be lower. The ultimate result of workers who can focus on their preferences and talents learn to do their specialized jobs better and work in larger organizations so that society as a whole can produce and consume far more than each person on their own essentially. The division and specialization of labor has been a force against the problem of scarcity. Next we'll talk about trades and markets. Specialization only makes sense if the worker can use the pay that they receive doing their job to purchase other goods and services that they need. In short, specialization requires trade. If you do not know anything about electronics or sound systems to play music, you just buy a phone, download the music and listen. You don't need to know anything about the internal combustion engine to operate a car, you just get in and drive it. Instead of trying to acquire all the knowledge and skills involved in producing all the goods and services that you may wish to consume, the market allows you to learn a specialized set of skills and then use that to get paid so you can receive the goods and services that you want or need. This is how modern society has evolved into a strong economy. So why study economy? Well, now that you have an overview of what economic studies Let's quickly discuss why you want to study it. Economics is not primarily the collection of facts to be memorized, though there are plenty of important concepts to be learned. Instead, economics is better thought of as a collection of questions to be answered or puzzles to be worked out. Most importantly, economics provide the tools to work out those puzzles. Virtually every major problem in the world today, from global warming to world poverty, to the conflicts in Syria and Afghanistan and Somalia, has an economical connection. If you're going to be part of solving those problems, you need to understand them. Economics is crucial. It's hard to overstate the importance of economics to good citizenship. You need to be able to vote intelligently on budgets, regulations, and laws in general. A basic understanding of economics will make you a well-rounded thinker. When you read articles about economic issues, you will understand and be able to evaluate the writer's argument. You will always find new ways of thinking about current events and about personal and business decisions. So in summary, economics seeks to understand and address the problem of scarcity. A modern economy displays the division of labor in which people earn by specialization in where they produce and then they use that income to purchase the products that they want. Learning about economics help you understand major problems facing in the world today, prepares you to be a good citizen and also helps you to be a well-rounded thinker. So those are some of the fundamental reasons why you should learn about economy and invest in yourself by subscribing to this channel. My name is Rai with Company Comprehension. I hope you learned something today. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.